Yeah. Take a breath. So, okay. <laughs> How many seconds? Eight seconds? Okay. You get off the plane in Africa, in Chad, and you felt what, Ann Curry? The last emotion I thought I was going to feel, I felt when I got off the plane and for the first time I landed on the continent of Africa. I was getting off the plane in Chad, across that border to get into Sudan. I was worrying about all the logistics and I walk off the plane, the last thing I'm supposed to think about or feel, I felt I was home, that I'd come home. Everything in what I was smelling and seeing and also in the people, it wasn't Hello, nice to meet you. It was, hi, sister. Hi, mama. Hi, auntie. That was, that was what it was. Uh, and, and it's like, then it, it, and then it was years later that I, that I had read about um, the Zulu people and their phrase, you know, Ubuntu, which means that I am because of you, that we are because of each other. And now I understand. We recognize that we are connected. And that's what you realize, that you, that you understand deeper when you travel in many of the nations in Africa. You realize how connected we are. And in fact, we all are connected because now we know the known science tells us we all came essentially from northeastern Africa. We came up essentially what is now Ethiopia. We emerged from there, moved across uh, into the Middle East and then over towards Asia, then back again into Europe. So in other words, we all come from Africa. So I don't know why but we're governed that. By, but we're governed by cave people. Mm. This world is governed by cave people energy, not from African energy. Mm. That's why we're off balance. There are caves in Africa, but not that many. No, and we didn't. Mm. We weren't huddled in there, mm. banging people over the head and dragging them. Mm. And it wasn't. But anyway, I digress because that's not digress, why we're here. But I, I hear what you're saying, but no, you're, but I'm I, not talking about the case of my earlier analogy. It was really about in those times. No, I get it, but, but you said I, we've evolved. But, but we've. Okay. But I hear what you're saying, and I, you're making the major point, which is that abundance changes how you think, and that there actually is known science that actually supports this as well. That that when you have abundance, you exactly what you described is actually supported by a lot of science. So. Um, I'm not so sure that you're wrong about that. I'm so. completely right. Always. All right. <laughs> not always, but on this one. Okay, all right. And, and yeah. I had to come to this. And let me just say, you know, when you, when you live in a country or in a world where you always feel like the other, because you're a very beautiful woman, mm. even, even, and it has evolved even for your exotic. You know, there are people that will look at you and say, Ann Curry, you're an exotic woman. I'm always going to be a black woman walking mm. into the world. In order to feel okay about myself, I had to do that work first to be okay, but also to look at the history. Why why am I always looked at as angry or as this? What, what is the propaganda behind this and how did it start? So I've been on this journey for the last 10 plus years and I'm happy to report that things are changing. There are things on the other side and I think that's important for every person uh, to think. I mean, uh, you, you know, we also can't assume things about each other. I mean, people used to call me blubber lips because my lips are large. Stop. Um, was, Wait. Mm, pause. Mm, Your lips are what now? Large. Based on what? Based Aunt on Curry, whatever. Curry they where? Call me, they call me. They where? Call me where? They, I was in, I, in school. They called me blubber lips. I actually oh bit my, my lips so that I would, did you I wouldn't the, be teased so Are much. you kidding me? Mm -hmm. I do have large lips. Let's no, you do not have large lips. I do lips. have large lips. Okay, you can have large people, lips, but they're not large. large. All right. Okay. Oh. Oh. <laughs> not, Don't you take away my large lips. I'm okay, happy you about can my have large lips. I, I want to be proud about my large lips. I mean, everybody's putting Botox in. I don't have to. You don't have to because okay, you're black. black. All right. So let's just uh, clear that up. And Curry, I'm so excited about this program that's coming on August 8th. Uh, it is called Chasing the Cure. And here's why. I am, uh, admittedly, I'm a... a <laughs> Botch watcher, a Dr. Pimple pop Popper watcher, mm -hmm. and I'm obsessed with this space, right? Mm -hmm. We do Wellness Wednesday. We have doctors on every week. And I hear from my listeners different things, and the lines light up because everyone, now WebMD, you know, everyone's a, a, a you know, armchair doctor. Mm -hmm. But you're actually using real doctors to find cures for people who have not found any answers. And I'm, I'm in. I leaned in. When I saw this trailer, I was like, I'm in. Well, can I tell you, this affects every one of us who in our who amongst us except the very young have not experienced the struggle to get a diagnosis or seen a family member struggle to get a diagnosis and then there are people we may have heard of who are undiagnosed and on top of that we're focusing on the underserved people who have not ever gone to a doctor who don't ever. have insurance yeah they're we're, we're seeking those people who are struggling to feel well who for and oftentimes and we're not seeking them they're coming to us okay we're we're almost actually 
I mean, I think we're going to I think we're going to be overwhelmed with them because there's so many. I mean, it's estimated by one study that as many as 14 million people are misdiagnosed every year. Mm. Now, listen, this is not to, this is not doctors not doing their job. It's that it's a very difficult job, and they're standing out in front with with this amazing quality of medical care that we have, but that that most Americans don't get. We have an amazing quality of medical care that most Americans do not have access to. So we've got a system that's in the way, and the only people who stand between any of us and, and illness, suffering, and even death are doctors. Mm. They're the ones who stand up, and they're the ones who fight, and they're the ones who know how to fight. Their ability to fight varies depending on their experience level, their background, their specialties, their ability that the day they woke up, whether they had enough coffee, all those things. Yes, they're human beings, and and so there, and there's also a variety. There's also a, you know, care depends it depends on where you live, what at what um, what um, medical insurance you have, what specialist you can get to, what you can afford, what you can't get, what you can't afford, who told you you should go talk to so-and-so or not. So we are siloed. All of us, even the people who can have a ton of money and they can go to their concierge doctors, we're all siloed. Because you know what? The chances of getting more than 15 minutes with your doctor is actually not great. You know, more often it's five minutes. And yeah. So then how do you learn what you ought to do, which may be different than what you ought to do what I ought to do to make sure we live the longest life. My mother died of a, no, it's very serious, she died of a gastrointestinal cancer. And her mother died of a disease that was in the same zone that probably, because she wasn't diagnosed, it probably was a gastrointestinal cancer. And there's lore in the family that, there, that there, this may be in my family. If my doctor did not write down all of this data, then when I start feeling funny in here, the doctor may say, well, you know, you just may have eaten something bad because you weren't paying attention because you didn't have the time. You didn't take the time. The doctors are unable to take that time, and they want to. One of the things that we don't realize is that there's a tremendous burnout problem for doctors. Here you go to all the school, schooling, you're working around the clock, you go and get your residency, you're just pushing and pushing. Why? Because you want to help people. You want to be an avenger to stand up against disease and death for people. What are you doing? Paperwork. What do you, how much time can you spend with a patient? Five minutes, if you're lucky. I mean, I'm just saying, we have created, a, the system is the problem. And what we're doing with this idea is trying to break, punch a hole through the system, or at least hit the silo, just hit it hard, so that people can be connected directly. Chasing a Cure, TNT, TBS, 9 p.m. Eastern, August 8th. Is this an Ann Curry production? Is no, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's in collaboration with a number of production companies and TNT and TBS, because they media. Because you did form your own media company. I did company. form, and I do other things as well. But this is this is a joint collaboration. This is amazing. Um, I'm so excited about this. And I'm so excited about you right now. Uh, I feel like, you know, I can't imagine that woman that sat on those couch, and on that couch for so many years, this woman with this agency having to endure all of the fake horrors, horrors of that space mm. and not being able to say anything. Mm. being caged. Mm. How does it feel to be free? Oh, it's amazing. You know, I, 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 what I feel great about is that I can choose um, the projects that, um, I, that are going to uh, deliver on what I think is uh, the purpose of my life. My purpose of my life is not just to hopefully be a good wife and, and mother and friend and daughter. Uh, and uh, to, but it, but it's also to give my my what I've always tried to do is give voice to people who don't have a voice, and I've learned over decades that they often have the most powerful stories to tell. And so this is the purpose. This is what I I can do. I can talk to people as you do. I can I can document. I just I have a piece in the. Uh, um, National Geographic magazine this month about the Dalai Lama who who is becoming increasingly less heard because he's getting older and it's more but difficult he's also to saying some crazy things though well you know what actually he's been misquoted so there you go we can get okay. into that if you want to we can get into that if you so want to so he didn't to. say that a woman should be no no he what he said was he was make he was ridiculing himself and saying the next Dalai Lama is going to have to be attractive because he's I'm struggling not. right now. Okay. He, if you don't understand, Man, look, when you talk to people I who see. don't speak the same language as you, you need to listen to them in a deeper way. 
And that's not what this reporter did. That's in my, and, and, th and you need to understand people from their culture and from where they live. And then you need to, it's not about what people say, it's what is the truth. And the intent. The goal is yeah. what is the truth. Right. So get at the truth. That's your job as a journalist, not to kind of, you know, to, to say, oh, you know, this celebrity said X, Y, Z, and then they've got to go on Twitter and say, well, that's actually out of context because what I really said was this. Get at the truth. Your job as a journalist is to give me the truth, not some headline that's going to get you a feedback or Twitter followers and a whole bunch of ratings or circulation or clicks. Your job is to give me the truth. And stop messing that up is what I have to say to anyone. And, there's, and, I, and I also admire journalists, so it's not as if I'm coming down on them. But I'm just saying that that is something no, we're well, seeing too much of. There aren't too enough journalists, though, because, you know, the training is that, to be fair, um, to, to get it right, to seek the truth, not clicks, algorithms, and eyeballs. We have, again, the world is upside down. It's time for more people like Ann Curry to correct it. And you. I mean, speaking truth is what we need. And I think that people talk about us being a post-truth era. Oh, what a bunch of... That is not true. We are not in a post-truth era. What we are in, however, one can say, is a kind of civil war. Is it war of ideas? Just said this yesterday. Oh, okay. We, you know what? You and I ought to have just lunch. said this on we the air. We are, we are of like mind. But the point is that what's going on is that there, there, there is a lot of evidence, and I, um, I, I, there probably is a different verb I should use here, but um, that culture trumps truth. Okay, do you understand what I'm saying? I absolutely. That do. when you are part of a group uh, and you feel defensive about your group. You will defend your group, and you won't believe something that's being said about them. So, 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 say so you're with a bunch of your friends, and somebody says, "You know what? That person in your group, you know, did that." Well, you know, and that's that's illegal. Well, the first thing you're going to do is defend her or him. You're going to say, "No, no, 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 she did not." And what are you saying? Who do you think you are saying this to, my friend? That's what happens, and that's a that's where we are in an extreme level. And so people are not hearing each other because they're only hearing and they're protecting their culture. And this is the problem. And so are we, no, we cannot survive without truth. Truth is the thing that allowed our human species, which was once one of six kinds of humans, the only species to survive are homo sapiens. Why? Because we believe in things together and we support each other and because of truth. Because truth helps us know we don't, we go this way because the bad guys are that way, or the the you know the Mastodon is that way. And he's running toward us. Truth is what saves us. Truth is what we need to survive. And truth is the only way we can have a democracy. And truth is not something of the past. It is something that is going to lift us up into the future. And and so there is no post truth era. But we have to recognize um, where we are and why we're here. Will you come back? I will come back and talk to you anytime. You are amazing. I love talking to you. No, you love talking. And, I love and talking, and I, I love talking and to you. Okay, listen, you got my number. I could listen all day to Ann Curry. <laughs> Chasing the Cure, it is going to be amazing, powerful. I already see it. I'm mm -hmm. in. You don't even have to worry about it. You got my eye eyeballs. Mm -hmm. 9 p.m. Eastern, TNT, simulcast on TBS for people who are suffering from undiagnosed illnesses, who aren't ever treated. This is an important show, and I'm so glad that you're anchoring it because it Thanks. gives us so much credibility and curry chasing a cure thanks for being on the thank camera you. to share thank right. you so much what a pleasure yes we'll be right back that was fire yeah no you are that was fire the hottest show in the 